So, I tried to make a video earlier and I screwed up because I made it too long. So, I made some notes and for the first one I didn't make any notes and I kept on rambling. So, this time for my review of Girls, 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 I will be talking about a few characters with cards and then basically off the cuff like the other characters. So first off will be Dean and I really like the more humorous moments of this episode <laughs> especially when like Dean and that girl are like talking like oh like what kind of rules like sexy rules or whatever and I just found that really funny and <laughs> no cash for ass I was like Dean hun oh god I was just like, oh, hon. And just the faces he made. Like, he was trying to, like, cover it up. And whenever he gets excited that he's about to, like, you know, like, get laid and stuff, he literally is, like, I don't even... It's it's hilarious, okay? The way he reacts, because he's just so excited and so, like, up and just pumped about it. And I'm just like, alright. Not gonna judge a Dino, but... <laughs> you look hilarious. Anyway, moving on. Um, and his dating profile. Because in a lot of fanfics, um, like any fanfics that involve, like, dating profiles and stuff, his name tends to be Impala67. So the fact that they did that, I swear they found it on the internet. Like, it wasn't just a coincidence that, <laughs> that they have a name in politics seven. Then again, it's not that hard to make it up, especially for Dean. Sorry, this drawer is being annoying. Okay, anyway. Um, and that moment between him and Cole, oh my goodness gracious. That honestly, I was like on the edge of my seat just watching the fact that Dean just hands him the gun. He's like, okay, like we, we should just talk. And if, like, you don't like what I say, you can shoot me. And it was just like, oh my god. Because I don't like Cole. And I'll get into that later. Um, and I found it uh, sad that Dean didn't really want to, like, talk about it. Like, he was just like, oh, I just said what he wanted to hear and that was it. And you know what? That's just not the case. No. No, it's not. Because we all know that Dean feels like that. And he's just trying to, like... <sighs> he needs to talk about his feelings, but he never does. I'm like, Dean, talk about your feelings, okay? Because I want to know. I'm here for you, child. Anyway, so next will be Sam. And I really like that moment between, like, him and that one girl. And how he's like, you just gotta fight it. And, you know, and it's sad because she, like, dies and whatnot. And obviously we kind of knew she was going to die because Rowena's little powers... My little witchy powers and tricks and stuff, you know, they're always fatal, which kind of sucks. Anyway, uh, what else? Oh, him making fun of Dean's dating profile, Impala67. I was like, oh, Sam, you're so cute. And, um, and I just like when he's, like, really concerned about Dean, even though Dean just is, like, <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. Like, you shouldn't care, Sam. Like, I'm the one that's supposed to protect you, not, like, the other way around. And, like, Dean has always had this mindset. And, like, I get it, but sometimes, no. Anyway. <laughs> Next is Crowley. And I like how he's just kind of getting pissed off at every little thing that's happening in hell. Because cause after, like, Abaddon, everything just kind of went to crap for him. So he's kind of, you know, getting that back. But he's just, like... You. You screwed up. Why'd you screw up? It's like stupid. And he called that, um, the, the sex trafficking, or whatever, the sex trade, he said that it was tacky. It's like, okay. And, um, and him seeing his mom, Rowena. Now I'm going to talk about Rowena, off the cuff here. And I love her. <laughs> I love her a lot, and I love her accent, and I just love everything about her, because I was super pumped for her before the season even started, because I read an article that was talking about new characters, and her name came up, 
and it was basically just talking about like the fact that you know there wasn't a lot of detail about her besides the fact that she was Scottish and that she was a witch and so basically people are like is that Crowley's mom it has to be Crowley's mom like there was like no doubt in the world that it wasn't you know so I was super pumped and I was like oh my gosh as soon as like Rowena comes into the picture you know she is gonna like have an interaction with Crowley eventually and Crowley's just gonna have that hello mother moment or just like a mother which is what happened and I <laughs> absolutely adore that scene I literally like zoomed into Crowley and he's like mother and I went on tumblr and it was really funny how many people were like freaking out I'm like what what his mom and I'm just here like <laughs> I knew that before season 10 even started. So I was just anticipating that. I was uh, I was just so happy when that happened. I literally yelled yes, like at the top of my lungs, and I scared my dog. So <laughs> that happened. And yeah. And I feel like there's a part of her that honestly kind of feels bad because I think like she loves what she's doing she was like born with this gift basically and you know she's doing what she wants to do and whatever but I also feel like a part of her feels bad like you know sometimes she screws up and I honestly feel like she kind of feels bad when she screws up that's just that's just a headcanon I'm I'm not sure because there's, there's honestly a look of like, oh crap, I did that. Oh, they're going to die. Mm. And I feel like there's just a part of her that kind of just like hits her. But, you know, she gets over it because, you know, she gets to do these things. She gets to have all this power. And if people die, well, that's just how it works. So there's a part of me that kind of like sees her as not that bad. But then again, like, I love her. She is my queen. And I just, uh, and I just love her personality. She reminds me of Missy from Doctor Who, which makes me love her more, because I love Missy, like, a lot. Um, anyway, next would be, I guess, Cole, since I was going to talk about him. And, um, yeah, I don't like him. I never liked him. I thought he was absolutely pointless. But hear me out. I honestly like how he's kind of like the season one Dean or, you know, something like that. He kind of is like this mirror image of Dean. And that's why Dean basically says, you know, listen, like, I know you want to do this. I know you want to, like, get revenge or whatever. But, like, as soon as you take that first step, you know, it's going to get dark for you. And I feel like it's talking from, like, personal experience. So, I could definitely see, like, Dean and Cole on that same level of understanding, you know. And they have things in common, which is quite interesting. So, I kind of like that dynamic. I just thought he was totally useless at first, but I definitely felt bad for him because he had a family, yet he invested all his time in trying to find Dean and trying to hunt down Dean and honestly it's like a waste and I feel so bad that he just wanted to do that like sure he has a family but just gotta hunt down the thing that killed my dad you know and just kind of sad so I feel bad for Cole and I'm glad that he learned something. Like, if I don't like a character, but they start learning something, I start to, like, feel for them more, you know? So, I basically dislike him less. Uh, and I feel like he's not as pointless as he was before. Like, there's something... He is, like, a mirror of past Dean. And I find that super, super interesting. So, I like that aspect of him. But he just needs to go home, go to his family, just live his life and not deal with, like, supernatural stuff. Because he shouldn't do that. Because he deserves better than that. And he should live a good life. 
That's all I'm saying about him. Next is a combo of Hannah and Cass. And this is honestly something that is so big to me because I'm a Cass girl, if you didn't know. And I love him so, so much. And like, I notice things. And for uh, Hannah, first and foremost, we we knew that she had a total crush on Cass. Like, we saw that. And I like uh, that one-sided thing. I think it's really cute. Um, what is it called? Oh, I can't think of it right now. But um, yeah, I just like that one-sided, like, person A likes person B, but person B doesn't have the same feelings back. Um, unrequited love, yes. I like that a lot, and I honestly find it really adorable. So, um, so, you know, I don't blame Hannah for, like, trying to, like, take Cass's hand or whatever. I honestly thought that that was super cute. And you could see in Cass's face, he's, like, really confused. He's like, hmm, but then he's like, okay, Hannah, like, I realize that you have feelings for me and I don't think that should happen because we have like bigger issues and plans and whatever and I don't think that feelings should get in the way of that. And then we see someone from the vessel's past, the husband of uh, uh, da, 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 Caroline, is that her name, I think? And and he basically was trying to find her for forever. And it's just... And Hannah was just like, oh, I'm with someone else. And basically kisses Cass. And I did not like that. And I also didn't like the fact that she was just like... And this is before the reveal. So at the time... When Hannah just, like, took off all her clothes and just stood in front of Cass, like, I was like, Hannah, like, what are you doing? Like, and she was like, oh, I'm going to take a shower. And it's like, oh, we, we don't need to take showers. And I found that kind of weird, but I also thought that, like, she was just, like, flirting with him. I was like, Hannah, don't do that. Just stop. And so that kind of made me, like, like, not like her in the moment. Just that and, like, her... Kissing Cass just so that the guy could move on. And then we see Hannah basically being like, I get it. You know, it was like this realization that she could feel what um, Caroline was feeling. And it just kind of like ate her up inside and she couldn't handle it and she was having like all these human feelings and she was like you know what am I supposed to do with this and she then went to the conclusion that like humans are really important and so she made the decision to like leave her vessel and I found that like wow honestly just claps to Hannah like props to her because I really like appreciate the fact that she did something like that. And it kind of parallels to Cass. And I really, really, really want to make a separate video on this because it's really, it's a big thing. But there is a parallel beginning to happen between what Hannah just went through and what Cass is going through. Because we see him googling Jimmy Novak. I mean, he told Hannah about Jimmy and Claire and that family and and now we see him just kind of like looking at his vessel's past and it's it's something, you know. So, that's all I'm going to say. It was actually a really good episode, so I give it a uh an eight. Yeah, it's really good.